I remember watching anime when I was younger and for me it was just all about the action. Like I just liked the way they fought and different things like that. But now that I'm older, I start to see things and notice things. And I'm wondering, is it more than just cartoons? So my question is, like, what is anime? Anime is an art form used for telling stories in an audiovisual medium. But it's a lot more than that. <laughs> it's like, the only thing I know about Japanese culture is like the hang chang on yang You know, like, everybody joke about it about Asian culture, so I never really like dug into it. It's very hard to sort of make a joke about anime if you don't know what you're talking about. You come off sounding really ignorant. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, oh, you like cartoons, and it's just like, aww. <laughs> but then when I started watching anime, I don't know. I guess I, get, I have a lot more respect for them and their craft. Some of the inspiration came uh, undoubtedly from American comic books, hence the wide-eyed characters. It's Betty Boop, so it's like the beginning of animation as a, as a medium for storytelling. It started early on, like with the very beginnings of film, like Astro Boy was black and white. I was really influenced by um, cartoons and Japanese artists and the heavy lines and the printmaking and the very stylistic uh, images they would make and how they influenced European artists. Anime was using a lot of Western techniques, but after years went by, anime started to progress and it started to branch off and use its own cultural identity. And then Western animation started using techniques that Japanese anime came up with, or Japanese creators came up with to, for anime, and they used it in Western animation. Like you start seeing the, the idiosyncrasies in their behavior as far as just like how they greet each other when they come to houses, like daily life stuff, geographical stuff. I've seen a lot of interesting looking foods, uh, religious practices. It depends on the type of anime that you're looking at. Any one of the Hayao Miyazaki films is a fantastic way to learn about Japanese culture because... If you didn't sort of go the extra length into actually trying to look into the culture, you probably wouldn't even get a lot of the jokes. Maybe a more natural part of the storyline in the anime stories that I've seen. One time in an animation class, uh, we actually saw a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, uh, the kids having to fight in the boondocks, and it's actually a frame-for-frame -frame, uh, redoing of a fight scene in Naruto. And I just found that really interesting, how uh, they take uh, existing footage from anime and make it yeah, have it in a completely new context, and I just found that really interesting to watch. Anime can be looked at as a direct representation of Japanese culture because it has so many small pieces of Japanese culture, tradition, history, and style inside it. The way I've seen just it's presented naturally, like, okay, this is part of our world. Japan, at least what I could tell, going back into antiquity, their history isn't broken. In the 1920s, Japan was working hard to become an industrialized nation, but discrimination towards the Japanese was a big problem, and it led to the deterioration of the companionship between the West and the East. Japan was an isolated island until Commodore Perry opened it to America in 1858. But even after Japan remained mostly closed to many foreign inf influences until the leading up to World War II. In 1924, the U.S. Congress passed the Exclusive Act that prohibited further immigration from Japan. And after World War II, in the 1930s, the U.S. military almost had total control over Japan's government. After Japan's surrender in 1945, the United States instituted sweeping changes in Japan through every aspect of life, such as new constitution, democratics, education, labor reforms, etc. Japan was westernized and they needed a way to form cultural identity, and the Japanese found a way to do that through art. I feel like a lot of anime and manga and pretty much any Japanese art from I uh, came after World War II, so it was trying to like reclaim and reshape their identity after what happened to them. Uh, trying to uh, fight for the Japanese culture in a time when, uh, during the American occupation. Japan was westernizing because of the uh, occupation and because of, of the upset of the war. 
Anime was like a way of escape. I would say it was a chance to keep in remembrance and reclaim their cultural identity. To quote historian Susan Naper, film and the visual mass media in general can indeed help to write history and create national identity. Culturally, in, in, in saying that, they, they tend to embrace a lot of their older habits, a lot of their older traditions. In the West, it's always about industry, the industrial revolution, and like conquering nature. But in Japan, it's more of like, it's something you literally have to live with. You have to have some degree of respect for what sustains your own life. In the West, for the most part, they're biased, but with Japanese and Japanese tradition and culture, they, they see everything as equal. You don't, you don't look at just one thing, you need both. You can't just weigh one side heavier than the other. They all both have to be equal and they have to balance out. And that's when Shinto religion comes in. Shinto religion is kind of like the native religion for Japan. I'm not sure how many people are still of the Shinto faith there. It's so ingrained in the culture that it still, still pops up a lot. When you think of like Native Americans, they worship um, sort of nature gods. So you have like the fox spirit and the trees all have spirit. And like if you've ever seen any of Miyazaki's work, there's a lot of Shinto woven into the landscape of his his films. The closest one I, I, I can think of at the moment is uh, Princess Mononoke, where uh, it's all about uh, striking a balance between uh, the environment versus uh, personal gain. San, the princess, uh, she just has completely turned herself away from humanity and lives with the animals and wants to be a spirit of nature. And then you have her rival is Lady Iboshi, who symbolizes like industry and factories. And at first glance, it's like she, it would be so easy to like just see her like one-dimensional villain because she's like industry and that's bad. But then she realized like no one is like a clear-cut hero or villain. Customs from feudal Japan are still used now today in Japan, and you can see that in anime whether it's through food or the way they greet each other or the way they talk to each other or even the way that they show affection. They, th they think they're cool or just because off habit, you know, like ninjas and samurais, that's, I mean, that's all older Japanese history. But I mean, when you start like looking at, you know, the way they name their characters, it'll be off of like older Japanese generals or you know, older clans and things like that. So they're always digging back into like their history and then pulling that and you and referencing it. That's why if you look at something like Naruto, it follows in certain respects Japanese history where it looks like it could be in a time almost like this. Right. Some of them still kind of dress like it's a feudal era of Japan. Things that happened a thousand years ago still have relevance, still have a place now. When I watched anime, I understood most things, but there were like, also a lot of things they referred to that I've never heard of. And that's when I officially made the connection that anime, when I went further, was more than just a form of entertainment. Anime means that, um, especially now, that it's more than just a specific uh, storyline. That animation can tell hugely complex and adult stories in any subgenre that you can think of. Anime is more than entertainment. I would say it's, it's like a window into another culture. And when you watch anime, you start to see the subtleties and Japanese identity in anime, and it starts to reflect real life. Everything that I know, but it sounds like I read a book. I haven't read books on Japanese culture, really. Yeah. No, I've read, I've read articles, I've read pieces, and the reason I've read those pieces is because there's a cartoon or a movie that made me go, I wonder what this is about. You definitely can learn a lot of stuff from anime, just as, as far as taking it into the context that it is. It's, it's, it's a very Japanese-centric art, and as long as you understand that, you know, it, it may not necessarily be indicative of like life in general, like like this is exactly how it works or all this stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? Right. Are you learning world history a little bit about Japanese culture? 
And that's when the lights start going off. And I start going, oh, I saw this and this. I saw this and this. I saw this and this. Da -da 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 -da. But all of the this I'm talking about are all anime. Or manga. So it, it was so the manga anime would have grouped to to like my curiosity about Japanese culture. And it explained a lot. But when you start looking at, at the basis of things of you know, either what happened in their history or how they psychologically deal with these things and, and how that manifests in the actual, in the, in the content, then you can start, you start seeing connections between things. So, I mean, if you pay attention, you, you, you'll be able to pick up a lot of stuff as far as like their cultural cues and whatever. Anime refers to a lot of Japanese history and you can see that in anime, whether it's referred to characters, characters' names, their background, where they're from, or their homeland. How I got into it was funny because um, there, there are two stories to it. It's like, how did I get into watching the style of cartoon versus how did I get into um, searching for this cartoon? A lot of this I learned from Japanese anime. Right. <laughs> like, a lot of this came from me watching it all, then going, okay, these things are constant. Then messing around and reading something in school, then going, oh, I already got told about this. Cause I was watching an episode of Dragon Ball Z, right? Or me going from um, calling ramen noodles ramen noodles to calling it ramen, because ramen is what it's called in Japan. It's noodles, right. yeah, it's noodles. You know what I'm saying? There's stuff like that that I didn't realize, or even the technique to like a, a good bowl of ramen. I learned that from Naruto. So you know how to cook it. I like you give me like if I get the ingredients, yeah, I'll, I'll do <laughs> the best version I could do, not being from Japan right. or having like Japanese friends around around me to correct me. Anime projects this idea that while you're watching it, it's exclusively fitted for a certain culture. It's like looking out the window into another culture.